1018. My next guest this morning is researching information for a book he's writing tentatively titled Railroaded, The Life and Near Death of Canada's Passenger Trains. Travel consultant Greg Gormick says he now fears what he calls Via Rail's looming collapse here in Atlantic Canada. And he joins me on the phone this morning to tell us more about this. Greg, good morning to you. Hey, Rick. Why don't you just introduce me as Cassandra? Because we always seem to be talking about how it's failing. <laughs> yeah. But it is. It, it is, is indeed. And uh, why do you suggest that perhaps uh, Via Rail's uh, days are numbered, at least here in Atlantic Canada? Well, we finally got um, the laundered version of their latest corporate plan, which is kind of interesting in that it was produced in July of last year, but we're just seeing it now. Um, I'm looking at financial statements showing that they'll have a, a budgetary shortfall over the next three years of $1.3 billion. Um, they're getting rid of the last of the old hands who really knew something about railroading at VIA headquarters, otherwise known as Fort Fumble in Montreal. And the new people, they just happen to check off the right politically correct boxes on the application form. Uh, we're seeing all sorts of stuff uh, cleaned up, made to look real pretty and sound great about how they're going to reorg the service in Atlantic Canada. My first question is, what service? Hmm. Like a train that runs three times a week with a dog's breakfast of equipment. They've let part of the fleet fall apart. We are heading to the brink of the cliff here. And all they can do is put out you know, glowing press releases. I'm not sure. Is is the motto this week, uh, the future is on board or love the way, or they're really good on press releases and slogans. No, but they're not so good on running trains or balancing books. I mean, can we not blame or put the, put the point the finger as well at the federal government? Is the federal government just sitting idly by while this is going on? Absolutely. All fingers point to Parliament Hill. And this has been going on for decades. This has gone on with successive governments, but it's finally catching up with them. Um, you've got a senator down there who's shown an interest in this issue, and he said to me in the first email we exchanged, I never thought that VIA was set up to succeed. David Gunn, the former president of Amtrak and the general manager of five of the biggest transit systems in North America, he has said from day one, VIA is dying. It was set up to reduce passenger service, not expand and improve it. But how many warnings do we need? Um, we've seen stories recently. Now we're finding out they won't be able to run the ocean because they need a loop track to turn it in Halifax, and they won't have access to that loop track down at Hall Term. H how do you run a railway yeah. without, without proper tracks to turn your trains, which are deteriorating? But don't worry. They say there's over a billion dollars worth of new equipment coming for the Central Canadian Corridor well, maybe. Yeah, that's the Quebec City to Toronto corridor, right? That's where they're yeah, focusing they're all their yeah, attention. But they're, 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 yeah, but there are even problems with, the, with that order, Rick. There's the whole thing. And they keep all of this under wraps, and it all goes back to Ottawa. And it's like sunny way, sunny day. Sorry, no. We saw the story the other day about the passengers that were freezing on the ocean. Um, that really doesn't boost mm -hmm. passenger or taxpayer confidence, does it? Let me ask you this question, Greg. Is there a demand, you think, in Atlantic Canada for the trains? That uh, Are people, you know, not you know, going uh, other ways to get around and about? Are, you know, are the trains still something you think that are viable these days? Yeah, but they need to, to revisit this whole issue. You know, we got these rail fan advocates running around, and they want the whole system preserved in aspic. And I'm sorry, the world has changed. The rail passenger service really hasn't. It's just the same old service that's declined and been cut. We need to re-examine this whole thing. Why is VIA running around making noise about how they could run the commuter service, which may or may not get launched, in Halifax? That's not their job. They're an intercity passenger provider. So we need to look at this. Yes, there is a demand. I've always said, and CN and VIA approved it, every time they tested something new, in rail passenger service they tested it in the maritimes because god love the maritimers you can beat them with a stick they still won't stay off those trains but if you don't have trains to offer or you price them out of the market you don't adapt them to to modern conditions 
well, eventually it will fail too. Mm. People will just get so tired of it. I'm surprised they haven't already. Now I'm looking here at, uh, again, the numbers you provided about what other countries are doing with their rail systems. Oh. Uh, Germany is investing 12.2 billion euros, which is what, 20-some-odd uh, billion dollars? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Serbia, 3.5 billion euros. India, 22.4 billion uh, U.S. dollars. Uh, uh, New Zealand, 700 million U.S. dollars. Uh, Ireland, a billion dollar, a billion euros. Uh, so other countries recognize the importance of trains and are investing big time money into their train systems. Yes, absolutely. And the other thing too is that it's not just the money; it's the governance, it's the people that you put in charge of the system. Well, we've blown it in all three categories. The governance is terrible, and it has been from day one. It's a top-down operation, you know, but if you send a letter to uh, um, um, the Minister of Transport, you'll get the same boilerplate answer that we got from the previous government. VIA is an arm's-length crown corporation that makes its own decisions to reflect the needs of modern travelers on the basis of the money provided. What is that? You know, it's not just the money. In fact, I wouldn't trust this crowd that's now in at, at, at VIA headquarters with the kind of money it would take to fix this. We need a thorough examination and audit of this operation. There's a lot of public money flowing through the hands of these people without proper oversight. And, you know, I put at the top of every one of my, my consulting reports, access plus mobility equals destiny. Every one of these countries you've mentioned that's investing money, they not only are putting the money there, they're putting the human resources, the legislative resources to do this properly because they recognize a country that cannot move its goods, move its people, and communicate effectively amongst itself is a country with no future. Indeed. Canada was a country based on mobility and access primarily through the railway. Cards and letters to Mark Garneau, Minister of Transportation, Parliament Hill, Ottawa. It's a free yes, and Senator Michael McDonald in Dartmouth. Now, okay, and uh, free postage uh, to both, uh, again, yeah. uh, on Parliament. Uh, let them know what you think about the train service and the demise of the train service. And, you know, give them a little, you know, light a little fire under their feet to, to, to turn this thing around. Right, Greg? Absolutely. That's what we need. That's what every other country is doing. So let's get on with it. My, I hope my book will help things along. Oh. <laughs> well, when you get that book becomes published, you let us know and we'll get you back on and talk some more about this. Great. I'll have you to the launch party. Thank you, Greg. Have a good day, sir. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. You have a great weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. That's a Greg Gormick. He's a travel consultant, again, uh, researching a, a book. He's uh, tentatively titled the book Railroaded, The Life and Near Death of Canada's Passenger Trains. And he's got big concerns about the future of Avia here in Atlantic Canada. Bill